Hey, what's up guys? Tim here. Doing a revisit of a previous tutorial that we've done before. So we're doing a Bane's cuff, again, with buckles. However, the method in this uh, tutorial is slightly different and produces a, I guess, a more true result of what the Bane's cuff should look like. So uh, this is the weave here. As you can see, it's the Bane's cuff with buckles. But uh, for those of you who've done the previous one, you'll notice that the main difference is that the center ridge in this bracelet is much more pronounced. As you can see it, you know, sticking out here. So for my original tutorial, we did this one with the knot and loop. Now while the uh, main weaving woven part uh, was done, you know, with the Bane's cuff weave, the end result looks quite different. As you can see, this one is much more flat and this one is uh, a bit thicker, has that ridge in the center. And uh, the reason being is that I did this on a four strand core and I didn't realize that um, to get this ridge, you need a six strand core. Okay, so that's what we'll be doing today. So this original design is by uh, D-Man McHugh, and uh, I did consult a, uh, another YouTuber's tutorial for this. However, his tutorial is in a different language, so I figured I would do my own take on it. So I wanna give it a shout out to him. Um, I think his YouTube name is Vince No Name, something like that. Um, but uh, you know, you'll probably see that on YouTube as well if you search for Bane's Cuff Paracord. So anyways, um, yeah, this is what we're doing today. I'm gonna give you guys a quick close-up look at it. So as you can see, essentially it does look the same, but we have that really nice ridge in the center, which I think this is the true look for a Bane's Cuff. And uh, you can apply this to the knot and loop as well. You just have to do a six strand core. Okay, so that being said, let's get into the tutorial. Okay, so to start out, I'm gonna make my uh, six strand core about four and a half feet of foliage green paracord. I've got my ends just uh, pressed down flat to make it easier getting it in, a, in and out of the buckle. So we start off by doubling over our paracord. Make sure both sides are even. And we're going to take this one end, put it through the top of your buckle. Okay. Put that through there. We'll just pull everything through. And then we have our first cow's hitch. Next, I'm going to take the buckle the other side off. So now I'm going to keep both my strands, you know, in line on this side. And then we're going to put them through the top of this buckle as well, like this. Okay. Simple so far. I'm going to pull all the paracord through one end. So this is where we are essentially determining our length of our bracelet. So again, like um, most thick bracelets, when you weave this one, um, you'll have your, say your length is set like this, when you weave it, uh, the strands tend to expand a bit and it will shorten your bracelet slightly. So do take that into account. I'd say give yourself an extra inch or so, uh, maybe three quarters of an inch. Uh, you may have to play around with it, okay? So we've got that like this. We're gonna set our length about, let's say about this much. I'm gonna adjust it later, but just for you know demonstration purposes, it won't be too accurate. Okay, so we have both strands through there. Now we're gonna take the strand, see how we've got one strand on this side, one strand on this side. We take a strand on the right. We're gonna push our knot or cow stitch down to one end. We're going to go through the top as well, okay, again, through this side, through the top, like this, we've got one strand there, and then on this side, we're going to do the same thing, okay, push everything to the side, like that, push it through the top. I'm just going to use my fid here to help me out. Okay, like that. Okay. So we have cow stitch up top, both strands going through the top. And now we're gonna go back through the bottom here. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna go on the outside so again, you know how we have one strand on this side, one strand on this side. Keep the strands on the same side. 
going to do the same thing. I'm going to go back through the bottom, go through the top here, like that. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Like that. Okay, so I hope that was clear enough. So just to recap, started with the double cow hitch up on this end, we brought our strands through the top of this buckle, went through here, went these strands back up through the top on this side and then back down through the bottom. So as you can see, we have now our six strand core. So two, four, six, like that. And you'll notice that these two bottom cords here, they're kind of loose, they're not attached to anything. So when you're weaving, uh, if you've got on your jig, you'll have to secure this to something. Or if you're just gonna tether it to your desk like I do, um, you might just want to just tie in, like maybe just put these through here, just tie a knot or use some uh, hemostats and just pinch them shut and keep them there while you weave. And uh, we're going to deal with those later when we're done uh, weaving the main part of the bracelet. Okay, so at this point, set your size and length of your bracelet, and then uh, you can set it up on your jig or you can tether it, and then uh, we can start weaving. And also, uh, when you get to the weaving part, you'll notice that these cords they get kind of funny near the end. So just kind of keep them uh, grouped like this as you're weaving, because at the end, um, yeah, they don't tend to line up perfectly, but it's okay. Um, as long as, I guess you would keep these strands coming out of the front here, keep them on the inside here, and you'll weave around them all the way up to here. Okay, so I'm going to set this up on my desk, and then we'll start the main weave. Okay, so I've got my core set up on my desk here, and I've got my main weaving strand fed through. And for my main weaving uh, working strands, I've got 12 feet of the OD green. Uh, that's my starting length. Stick to the end of the video. I'll tell you how much uh, you know wastage I end up because um, you know that just tends to happen. So uh, yeah, I've got this main strand. I just found the middle point. I put it underneath the uh, little cow hitch part here. So you know, you'll notice um, these upper strands. They're not really like perfectly lined up because they're kind of overlapping. You want to keep these two strands coming out the top in this position, and uh, these ones coming out the back on the outside. Okay. So I've got fids attached to each working strand end. So if you hear stuff clanging around, that's my fids. Okay, so to start off, we're gonna do uh, two twists. I'm always gonna do left over right. So one, two, like that. So now I'm gonna bring this strand on this side. Okay, you wanna lay your uh, strand over top the two rightmost strands like this we're gonna go behind these two so behind these two and bring all this all the way through like this and then we're gonna go through the top above here That. And now this last one is the trickiest. So you see this uh, inner two strands here? We're gonna go in between them like this. See? And it's to the right of the twist on the right side. So in between the two middle strands to the right of the twist. Okay, then we'll pull that all the way through. Like that. Now again, um, with the Baines cuff weave, you want to keep this knot kind of vertical and just kind of work each strand or each knot tight. Okay, push that up and remember to push each knot, successive knot, up because that'll make the uh, the weave look really good. Okay, so that's one side. Now we're just going to do the same thing on the other side. So I'm going to keep this on the right side. I'm going to grab my other strand here.
Okay, so same thing. We're going to go behind the two rightmost strands. Pull everything through. And then we're going to go on top, like here, right? Over the top. Make sure we don't get tangled with our other strands. Sorry about that. Okay, yeah, so we went through the top, same thing. And this time, from this side, we're gonna go from behind, and again, to the to the left of the twist, and through the middle two strands here, like this, okay? Like that. This is just a fit extension, that's why it looks so weird. I really need to get a second fit. Okay, so we went through the middle of the two strands and to the left of the twist. Pull that all the way through. So that is essentially the knots that we're going to be tying. And again, work all the slack through. Kind of pull it up like this. Push up each knot. See, how I'm kind of just pulling on this section here, and that'll pull underneath this strand here and go through there, right? Okay, so now that we've got the first two tied, you can kind of hold everything like this and just pull towards you and tighten everything up. All right, so you can see that's pretty much it. But just to show you one more time a little quicker, we're gonna do two twists again. So left over right, left over right, like this, okay? Grab my end, my fid. So same thing, make sure you, and again, make sure you go underneath here. Don't go over top the strand, below, behind. Pull this all the way through, like this. Then we're gonna go through the top, like that. And then we're gonna go behind, and we're through the two middle strands and to the right of the twist. And after you've done all that, you can push everything up and just slowly work all the slack out. Okay. So the more consistent you get your knots, you see how this nice ridge is forming? That's what we want. You want to get everything nice and evenly spaced. I'm doing this a little loose right now just for um, demonstration purposes, but when I continue to weave, I'm going to tighten everything up. Okay, and then to do this side, just to show you again, bring everything up to one side. Okay, so again, go beneath your strand behind, pull everything through. Like that. We're going to go over top, through the middle. And then behind, do this little gap here, you can see, right there. Like that, okay? And then push everything up, and then continue to tighten your knots. You don't want to pull too hard because that will actually deform this uh, little knot here. So give it a good tug, but not too tight. And then what I like to do is just push everything upwards because uh, you want to make these little gaps as small as possible because the tighter the weave, the better this one will look. So there you can see I've done two sets of knots and I'm just going to continue weaving all the way down my the main part of my bracelet and uh, I'll show you guys at the end how to finish it off. So as you can see, I'm just about done weaving. I think I've got enough space for one more. So for this last knot, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go behind. And at this point, you definitely want to um, use your fids if you have them. I went behind. I'm going to go through. But this time, I'm not going to go back through the center. I'm going to keep the strand behind there. OK, so we do the same thing on this side. And see, I uh, didn't have my strands perfectly even, so do be careful of that. Um, because it would have been a shame if I you know, ran out of paracord on one side only. 
So I can do the same thing on this side. I'm going to go behind and through. Really lucky, just have enough to finish. So I think I could have done one more, but it's not necessary. And I don't have enough paracord on one side. Anyway, so I'm going to tighten up this last knot. You can see we have our last two strands coming out the bottom here. So we're going to tuck our strands underneath some of these here, and we're going to do the same with these. So I'm just going to tighten up the last knot, and I'll show you how to uh, tuck in the extra strands. So as you can see, we've got this one strand here coming out the back. Um, we went through the weave here, but we didn't bring it back through the front. So now I've got it on the fid, and see these two um, knots here? I'm going to put it underneath these two, okay? Just like that. We'll tuck it underneath, pull it tight, and we can snip and cinch here. So as you can see for the top one that was really short, um, I didn't have enough, you know, extra to push it through with the fid. So I just used my hemostats like this, and I, you know, pushed my hemostats underneath the these two knots here and pulled the strand through. I just did that off camera because it was a bit of a struggle. Okay, so uh, we've got that. We can snip and singe these two strands here now. And then lastly, for our two extra strands here, we're going to do the same thing. So I'm just going to attach my fid to this strand here. And it doesn't really matter which one you do. I'm just going to put them underneath um, these two. Okay, like that. Pull that all the way through. Like that, okay. So I'm gonna do that for this side as well. I'm gonna push, tuck this strand underneath here. And then uh, we can snip and singe off all the excess and then we'll be done. All right, and there we have it guys, I'm done. So I finished uh, snipping and singeing off the excess here. There's four strands, everything's tucked in nice and tightly and our bracelet is nice and woven. Okay, so again, just to give you one last close-up look at the Bane's Cuff. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, the original video I did about Bane's Cuff, um, the method was slightly different from this one. And as a result, um, I think the final product for the original tutorial didn't look exactly like um, the Bane's Cuff weave that we've seen out there. So I think this is really it. This is the true method for doing it properly because you've got that really nice pronounced ridge in the center. And when you buckle it, it just looks really, really cool, like that. Okay, so that is about it. I hope I've explained everything clearly and concisely. If you guys have any questions, please do leave a comment or question down below. I'll be sure to get back to you as soon as I can. And I do consult the related videos at the end for um, you know anything that might uh, help you out as well. And if you haven't already, please do like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to connect with me on uh, all the other social media networks like uh, Facebook, Twitter, check out my blog, and um, Instagram as well. I'll have all those linked in the description down below. So thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you on the next tutorial.